Kanye West and Virgil Abloh tamed the fashion world and brought it to its knees. But it wasn't always like that, as both fashion gurus started as errand boys at Fendi House after they had already experienced success in a separate industry. So today we look through the thorny path that Ye and Virgil had to walk through to make their fashion dreams come true. Virgil was always passionate about the world of fashion. At 17, my friend Chris Ian and I used to be so obsessed with Jordan that we were drawing Nike shoes and sending them to Nike. And Nike would be like, oh, we don't accept designs. In fact, while he was studying architecture at the university during his master's, Virgil made lots of shopping trips to New York and started blogging about various brands that produce skate clothing. When I was studying architecture at Illinois Institute of Technology, I had this professor named Thomas Kearns. I remember him telling me, learn these programs and don't use these programs just to make architecture. So that was how I learned three-dimensional programs in Adobe Suite. And it was during this class that I started making t-shirts instead of just making architecture. As soon as Virgil finished college, his mother taught him all about the basics of clothing design. Having this particular skill set was a push to continue his development in the sphere and create his fashion brand. His t-shirt business was slowly developing with his connections, and Virgil had found out about Kanye West and the place where his merchandise was screen printed. Virgil had an idea to attract the attention of the shop owner, and he decided to do it by creating a collection for good music. The owner of the shop was observing Virgil's work for quite some time, but still, he wasn't sure enough that Ye himself should be made aware of Virgil's work. To make things happen, it took some persuasion from Virgil's side. In a month, Ye hired Virgil to help design his merchandise. Ye was already popular in hip-hop long before he started working with Virgil. In fact, right before their internship started, Ye was on the verge of going on a North American tour with Lady Gaga. Everything was ready for the tour, including stage design, promotional photos, promotional video with the tagline, what happened to all the rock stars, the fame killed them. But Ye had a very unfortunate moment at the MTV VMAs by interrupting Taylor Swift during her acceptance speech. Well, Lady Gaga canceled the whole tour, so Ye had to start from square one. Right about that time, the fashion house Fendi was in the middle of becoming something entirely new as Prada and LVMH owned more than half of the company and continued the painfully slow seizure of the rest of the company controlled by Bernard Arnault. CEO of Fendi House at the time was Michael Burke, who had previously worked at both Louis Vuitton and Dior. Only in a three-year time, Michael Burke acknowledged that Virgil Abloh was a treasure that should be nurtured and admired. But from the very beginning, Ye and Virgil were doing the simplest jobs possible. They were responsible for making Michael Burke his daily coffee. I paid them $500 a month. I was really impressed by the news they brought to the studio. They were disruptive in the best sense of the term. Basically, the coffee making business was one of two tasks that they did quite diligently during their internship at Fendi. And we don't know if this is some sort of hazing, I guess, in that world, or if it was supposed to teach them something, maybe some wax on, wax off. But Ye and Virgil were working regularly nine to five, bringing coffee and making photocopies. Every day, going to work, walking to work, getting cappuccinos, we couldn't do anything. We were just happy to have a key card. And sometime, Virgil and Ye had a sit down with Luis Wilson and discussed how to do things in the fashion world the right way. There was a professor by the name of Louise Wilson, who was the head of the master's program at Central St. Martin's in London, and she was the teacher for some of the greatest designers of our time. Ye and I sat with her, and we were like, hey, we want to learn the right way. And she basically said, you guys are idiots. You know more than my students. Why on earth would you want to go to fashion school? But that process was sort of how we ended up interning at Fendi. And when we were there, we did all the meetings. We were off the radar in Rome, getting to work at 9 a.m. on a Monday. We did all the intern work. While still engaged in an internship, Ye and Virgil went on a trip to Japan, where they wanted to learn more about the fashion world. We were doing JPEGs in Japan. We were making Photoshop so much and not making clothes, we started joking about the JPEGs. We couldn't figure out how to actually make the clothes, so we just do it in Photoshop. And Virgil became the fastest Photoshop artist that I've ever met in my life. Around 2012, Ye and Virgil attempted to show their bosses in Fendi the thing that they created, leather jogging pants. The Fendi house wasn't inspired at all and rejected the idea. But just a year later, when their internship came to an end, leather jogging pants came quite a hit. 
We brought the leather jogging pants six years ago to Fendi, and they said no. How many mother efforts did you see with leather jogging pants? While still an intern at Fendi, Ye claimed to be involved in designing Giuseppe Zanotti and Balmain sneakers. Ye tweeted, Snuck to Giuseppe Zanotti factory, still under contract, and learned to design women's shoes for two years. The contract Ye was talking about was the footwear deal that he signed with Louis Vuitton, which gave Fruit as three sneakers that had come out at that time, the Jasper, Mr. Hudson, and the Dawn. When their internship at Fendi was over, Ye hired Virgil to boost his fashion ambitions and create something meaningful in the fashion world. Ye took Virgil and all his team to present the collection of footwear in which Ye was working with Louis Vuitton in Paris, as well as the DW collection, which was named after his late mother, Don de West, who had passed away in 2007. The collection had an abundance of snakeskin prints, skin-tight leather pants, and fur. While they showed their creations at several shows at Fashion Week in Paris, both Ye and Virgil were showing the streetwear style of their clothes as well. To say the least, the fashion world was not quite ready to be inspired by streetwear. Ye and Virgil were mocked vigorously online, and there were lots of parodies and even a mocking up episode of South Park. When Ye and I were first going to fashion shows, there was no one outside the shows. Streetwear wasn't on anyone's radar. But the sort of chatter at dinners after shows was like, fashion needs something new. It's stagnant. What's the new thing going to be? In 2012, Donda was born. It was a more than 20 division company that popularized ideas such as products and experiences that people want and can afford and goals to marry our wants and needs. The company was named after Ye's late mother and Ye appointed Virgil as creative director. And by doing that, Ye opened a lot of doors for him. Also, Virgil was asked to be an art director for Watch the Throne, the collaborative album by Ye and Jay-Z. It was a very successful endeavor that resulted in Virgil earning a Grammy nomination and opened a lot more doors into the design world. Although Donda really didn't do much for many years, it was a lot of behind the scenes stuff and not much fruit came out of it for the next couple of years. What happened with Virgil then was a logical continuation that would turn him into a fashion icon. That same year, Virgil started working at Donda and he created his fashion brand, Pyrex Vision. It was so popular that some New York rappers, ASAP Rocky, for example, were big fans right from the start. Also, this wasn't a big deal. It was screen printing Pyrex, Pyrex Vision being the Pyrex pot that people would cook drugs in, which related to hip hop, and many rappers started wearing it, which led to many fans start wearing it, and he was charging a hefty price for it. Also, Virgil did a small tribute to Michael Jordan by printing Pyrex and 23 on Champion and Ralph Lauren, which increased their price to $400 for pieces that were likely made for under 50, making him more famous, more controversy, and richer. Despite Pyrex Vision closing down a year later, it affected Virgil's approach to the fashion world and inspired him to create his multi-creative agency as well as his well-known brand now, Off-White. It was 2013 when Virgil decided that it was time for Off-White to emerge. The idea behind this label was a blend of streetwear, art, music, travel, and luxury. It was defined by Virgil as, quote, the gray area between black and white as the color Off-White. Quotation marks were signature details of the brand and were references to his work back in the architecture field. In a year's time, Virgil showed off-white men's and women's collections at Paris Fashion Week. The same year, Virgil was almost named as a finalist for the LVMH Prize. Although he didn't win, being so high on the fashion ladder brought off-white much-needed recognition, and Virgil started collaborations with big labels. 2016 was the year when Off-White issued several collections with Montclair and Umbo, which caught the attention of other big brands. 2017 brought even more opportunities to Virgil as he won the British Fashion Award for the Best Urban Luxe Brand and opened a collaborative exhibition with Takashi Murakami at the Gagosian, which is a massive art gallery, and Takashi Murakami, also known for making the Kids See Ghosts album cover, but graduation and a very popular artist in his own right. Future collaborations would skyrocket Virgil to be a driving force in the fashion world. But the most notable collaboration in Virgil Abloh's career, other than him eventually working for Louis Vuitton, which is not necessarily a collaboration, was Off-White and Nike. It opened the world of sneakers before him, something he had always dreamed of when sending designs to Nike. It all started with Virgil creating a redesign of 10 classic Nike sneakers, 
naming the collection the 10. Nike was in awe of the collection and continued working with Virgil several times in the future. Next, Virgil was named the head of Louis Vuitton after his predecessor, Kim Jones, replaced Chris Van Asch at Dior. It was a unique achievement as it was the very first time in the fashion world that a black person, or quote, person of color as they labeled it, was the head of Louis Vuitton. In 2018, Virgil launched his first collection and used other people of color as they described it to walk on catwalks showing clothing that promoted diversity. Ye was present at this moment and shared a hug with an iconic photo that can be found everywhere with Virgil, remembering how far he had come from the internship to the highest ranks within the fashion industry. That same year, Virgil did a collection of home goods with IKEA, and it was a landmark for further Virgil home creations. You know who I'm most inspired by? That kid that hasn't had the chance to showcase their brand yet. Those kids motivate the work I do every day. That's the muse for me. The next generation. I want to work to inspire people like them. In 2021, Virgil Abloh was invited to be a keynote speaker at the graduating class commencement and received an honorary degree from the Rhode Island School of Design. In his speech, he said, How ironic this moment is. Now, I myself was a bright-eyed high school graduate that looked at the list of schools I wanted to apply to. I wanted to join RISD. I filled out the application, sent it in, and got a big fat no. But let that story not deter you from achieving and going after your goals because, ironically, fast forward all these years later, I have over my shoulder an honorary degree from RISD through a whole lot of hard work and determination. There's nothing more important in my mind than a youthful generation that wants to take on the world with full force and creativity. The world is in need of ideas and ambitious ones. So be ambitious and relish in your achievements. When Virgil was climbing up the fashion ladder, Ye was busy too. He tried to get another internship as an assistant to Raph Simmons, but was denied the job, or Raph Simons, however these fashion people pronounce it. Raph, when asked about how he felt about having Ye as his assistant, said, I was blown away from the planet when he told me. I know he's very serious about this. I don't take it as a joke, but how can I imagine him being my intern? It's a very extreme situation. From that point, Ye started some serious work on the Yeezy brand. He was working on the sneaker design while being in partnership with Nike, but the release date of the sneakers was delayed in plenty of times, and the royalties and lack of creative direction only brought dissatisfaction. Eventually, Ye switched over to Adidas, and then the sneakers were released in 2013, and he debuted his brand Yeezy in 2015. Yeezy Season 1 was revealed to the world in 2015 during New York Fashion Week. The collaboration between Ye and Adidas was very fruitful and received numerous appraisal as well as tons of sales. The main color of the collection were nudes, army greens, and navy blues, and it did get some, I would say, pushback and criticism from hip-hop fans saying it looked like homeless wear. Two models of sneakers, Yeezy Boost 750s, the high tops, and the 350s, the lows, were made as decade-defining sneakers, more so the 350s since there weren't more than a couple of models of the 750s before they were discontinued. You guys know my influences. I've got four influences, and it's written all over the face. You see Raph Simons right there. You see Helmet. You see Margiela. You see Vanessa Beercroft. You see Catherine Hammett. It's blatantly right there. In Easy Season 2, Ye added bomber jackets and a bit more brighter hues into the palette. Next Easy Season was also a release party for Ye's 2016 album, The Life of Pablo, and was more a star-studded spectacle that's still highly praised for such a unique delivery and mix of music and fashion. Though Season 4 was a bit of a disaster because of the stiletto-heeled shoes that proved to be hard to walk in for many of the models. Easy Season 6 made headlines again by the way it was promoted. With the help of his then-wife Kim Kardashian and her star friends, Ye had a social media campaign, and the collection itself was revealed through Instagram with the help of various influencers who wore pieces from the collection and showed them with paparazzi-styled photos. The next two Easy Seasons in terms of apparel didn't really make much noise. They added flared leggings, neutral-toned woolen bralettes, and waist-length cropped puffers. And at this point, the Easy Season, the clothing, wasn't performing as well as the sneakers. Those became a global hit. And even after Ye's deal with Adidas was terminated, he's still selling a ton in the second-hand market, and plenty of people want more. 
but we're to see if that's yet to come, although it's very unlikely. From an internship with no experience and just getting coffees for somebody, to having two of the biggest fashion brands in the world, one of the biggest sneakers and one more so based in apparel, and working for one of the most popular luxury brands ever as one of the heads, you could say that Ye and Virgil definitely dominated fashion. Make sure to subscribe for more.